In this question, we're told a ship leaves port and sails 8 kilometres on a bearing of 050 degrees before turning and travelling 3.5 kilometres on a bearing of 110 degrees where it stops at a rig. At 18.20 hours, the ship leaves the rig and heads directly to the port with a speed of 1.2 kilometres now. We need to find the time the ship returns to port. With any question like this, if we just draw a quick sketch, it might help us out. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start with a north line. So this is where we're starting. And we're now sailing on a bearing of 050 degrees. And that is going to be for 8 kilometres. So there's 90. So we're going to have something that looks give or take like so. So let's go ahead and label this angle up. This now is an angle of 50 degrees. A bearing of 050, so an angle of 50 degrees. This now is my north line. And I'm going to put up now another north line just here. So there's the next north line. We can say now the length of this journey was 8 kilometres. So if we just put on here, this will be 8 kilometres. We're now going to travel on a bearing of 110 degrees. So 90 degrees is just there. So 110 is going to be somewhere, give or take, around there. And this is now for 3.5 kilometres. So let's put that one just there. So what we've got then is this angle right here, and this is going to be 110 degrees. So 110 degrees, and this is going to be now 3.5 kilometers. So what we've got here now is P for the port, and now we've got R for the rig. So what we're going to do then is stop at the rig, and we want to go back now to the port. So let's consider that journey. And that journey, if I connect this up, is going to be now from R to P. So what angles can we put on here? Well, this is a north line, so these two lines are parallel. So this one is north and this one is north. Therefore, from here, we can use co-interior angles. These two angles right here are going to add up to 180 degrees. So that now will be 130 degrees. I've got 130 and 110. That means now that this angle right here needs to be 120 degrees. So what I've got here is a triangle, and I'm just going to sketch a triangle to the side. What we'll have is the following. So my triangle is going to look something like so. Again, this doesn't have to be a massively accurate sketch, but it'll give us some idea of what we're dealing with. So we've got this angle right here, and this is going to be 120 degrees. We've got now the length of 8, and we've got the length of 3.5. We're going to use the cosine rule to find this length right here, which I'm going to call A. So this is going to be A, so this will be angle big A. I'll call this one B, and I'll call this one C. We can say that A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. And you'll be given this in the formula book. So we can say now that A will be equal to the square root now of B squared, which is going to be 8 squared plus c squared, which is going to be 3.5 squared, minus now 2 lots of b, which is going to be 8, multiplied by c, which is going to be 3.5, multiplied by the cosine now of 120 degrees. So we're going to have cosine of 120 degrees. That will give me the length a, and it will give me this distance just here. So let's grab the calculator. Make sure you're in degrees mode. Shift mode 3 on here will get you in degrees. So what we want then is the square root of now 8 squared plus 3.5 squared minus now 2 lots of B, which is going to be 8, multiplied by C, which is going to be 3.5, multiplied by the cosine of 120 degrees. So if we put the cosine of 120 degrees in and we close this off, this will give us now the value that we want. So I'm going to hit enter, and that gives me now the root of 417 over 2. So that's this length right here. So let's go ahead now and find a decimal answer for that, and that's going to be 10.21. So what I'm going to do is put here that this is going to be now 10.21, and that's approximately now 10.21 kilometres. So what we're after is the time that we get back. We've got now a speed of 1.2 kilometers now. So we know from our SDT triangle, 
we've got now, and I'll just draw this up, we want the following. We want the time. So what we've got then is now the distance divided by the speed. So the answer in my calculator, which I'm going to use, and I'm going to use the exact answer, I'm going to have the root of 417 over now 2. Let's check that that's correct. And I'm going to divide this now by 1.2. So if I divide this by 1.2, this will give me now the time taken. That is distance divided by speed. So if I go ahead now in the calculator and divide this by 1.2, the answer now gives me this right here. I'm going to go ahead and press this button, and this will give me the time that it takes. So this is going to take me 8 hours 30 minutes and 30.87 seconds. So I'm going to say now, on this one, I'm going to round it now to 8 hours and 31 minutes. So it'll be 8 hours and it'll be 31 minutes. And that now is to the nearest minute. So to nearest minute. So what we want to do now is consider what time we're going to get back. So what we've got to do is simply add that now to the 18, 20 hours. So if we add this 8 hours, 31 minutes to 6.20 in the evening, we're going to arrive back at 0 to 51 to the nearest minute. So it'll be 0 to 51 hours, and that now is to the nearest minute. We're not given a level of accuracy, so I'm simply going to say 0 to 51 hours, or 2.51 a.m. And that is given now to the nearest minute. We can see it's 8 hours, 30 minutes, and about 30 seconds. So all I've done is round it up. If you want, you can go ahead and say that it's going to be 8.50 and so on hours, and then just add that up. This gives you it in hours and minutes. So there's my final answer, 2.51 a.m.